Thank you to Kenneth Copeland Ministries for sowing the airtime for this broadcast. There's enough power in every sick room and in every hospital room to raise up that sick one that may be describing you. Yes, you yes. may be in a sick room. Yep. You may be in a hospital room. And I want to remind you, power is present. That power is there to do a work. Believe in what's present, not try to get something, but notice that he's already made it yours. It's present right where you're at. Say, I receive that power. I receive that power. I receive it right now. I receive it right now. From the top of my head. From the top of my to head. the soles of my feet. The soles of my feet. We're so glad to have you with us today for Jesus the Healer. Thank you for joining us. And I tell you what, before we get into the teaching further, let's go ahead and pray today. Mm -hmm. Father, I lift up every viewer. Yes. I lift thank them you. up and I thank you for the divine answers thank that you yes. have for their life. Yes. Father, I pray that you give us ears that hear, oh, yes. eyes that see, yes. hearts that are open and receptive to your word oh, yes. and help us to be doers of it all. Yes. And we give you all the thanks and praise. We thank you for taking our life thank and you. setting it on course. Yes. We're so grateful we belong to you and you belong to us. Yes. And we look to you for words that bring heaven to earth today. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We're so glad amen. you're here with yes. us. Yes. We love you. Yes. We, pray for, we pray for you. We believe yes. God with you for answers. Yes. And yes. we encourage you, when you listen to the broadcast, uh, decide I'm going to be do, a doer of the things I yes, hear yes. in the word today. Oh, yes. amen. amen. This, uh, this week and past several episodes, we've been teaching on the goodness and the mercy of God. Mm -hmm. yes. And I tell you what, when, when we focus on that and we give it its proper attention, it elevates us. Yes. Yes. And so we've been looking at some of our key scriptures, first Chronicles chapter 16 and verse 34. It reads, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Well, you know, when the word says that, we need to stop and do that, right? Yes. Yes. Thank you, God. What are we thanking him for? The next phrase tells us what we're to thank him for, for he is good. He yes. is good. For his mercy endureth forever. Yes. Uh, you'll never be without his goodness and his mercy. Yes, sir, it yes. endures forever. Amen. 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 And I love the phrase. It says, for he is good. It doesn't just say that he does good. Yes. We know that he does good, right. but the reason he does good is because he yes. is good. Right. He is good yes. for his mercy endureth forever. And then Psalms 34 and verse eight, it tells us, oh, taste and see mm -hmm. that the Lord is good. What's that mean? Purpose to become a partaker, yes. Yes. recognize his goodness. Yes. Amen. Amen. And then it goes on and it says, blessed is the man that trusts in him. Well, what about him are we trusting in? His goodness is what it's yeah. talking about. Yeah. So trust in his goodness. Mm -hmm. When you miss it, don't trust in uh, your ability to make things right. right. Trust in his goodness to deliver you. Right. His yes. goodness yes. that yes. makes everything right. And not only that, his goodness that gives you the best life. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then we know this one, Psalm 23 and verse 6, and I'm going to read it out of the Amplified Translation. Psalms, Psalm chapter 23, verse 6, Surely or only goodness, mercy, and unfailing love shall follow me all the days of my life. Know this, that anything other than that that's following you didn't come from God. Right. 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 Fear has no business following you because mercy is following you. Amen. Um, worry has no business following you around. Shame, regret, doubts have no business following you around. And really, uh, the goodness and mercy that follows us around overcomes all those. Mm -hmm. And so we need to make sure that we're not yielding to the wrong thing because every day, goodness and mercy is there for us to draw on. Yes. Amen. Amen. So it, it, again, it reads, Surely or only goodness, mercy, and unfailing love shall follow me all the days of my life yes. and through the length of my life. Amen. 
The house of the Lord and his presence shall be my dwelling place. So it is his goodness and his mercy that ushers us into his presence, that we can live mindful of his presence every day by being, let's just not be mindful of where we missed it. That's not worth our attention. What's worth our attention is his goodness and his mercy. Amen. Um, I was talking about yesterday, if you did not watch the previous episode, go back and watch that. Especially we've done what, four previous episodes to this, but we encourage you to watch them all. But we have to, we have to recognize that anytime something tragic or difficult happens in our life, God didn't do it. Satan comes to steal, kill and destroy. Jesus said, but I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So don't ever misplace the blame. Don't ever place blame on God when difficult things happen. And what happens where people place blame on God is because they're thinking wrong. Wrong thinking. I was was sharing in uh, the previous episode about how Adam and Eve, they went, after they sinned, they went and hid from God. Mm -hmm. That's called wrong thinking. Because... God hadn't done anything to them worth hiding from. Right. He's never, he had never been harsh, unkind. Uh, the one they should have been hiding from was the serpent. They really should have just run the serpent out of the garden yeah. Yeah. and not sitting there just fellowshipping with him. They never hid from the serpent. They never stood back from him. Mm-hmm. They sat and they listened to him. Right. If you listen to the wrong thing long enough, it'll start making sense to you. Right. Uh-huh. And that's what exactly happened with Adam and Eve. They listened to the wrong thing so long it started making sense to them. Right. And so when they came back after that time of having entered into that sin Mm -hmm. and then God came down in the cool of the uh, cool of the day to have fellowship with him. They went and hid from him Mm -hmm. and he's not, he hadn't done anything worth hiding from. He came down to, he came down to really give them the opportunity to repent and they didn't do that. Mm -hmm. Um, I was listening and thinking about this. I was reminded of a story that I don't know about you. Many of you out there are probably animal lovers. I, I, I enjoy animals Mm -hmm. and uh, I like dogs and cats. I like them all. (laughs) And well, not all. Not all. Not. <laughs> let's qualify. That. If you got too many legs, like eight legs or something, like a tarantula or something, no. Or if you don't have any, uh, uh, I might not enjoy you that much. But um, <laughs> telling about a, a pastor that he he was a dog lover and he he would always go and rescue you know certain dogs that didn't have homes. And there was this one dog that he got, and he said that dog had been, of course, abused and mistreated. And so he said, when I got him, he would cower down. And he says, I understood that because he had learned to do that because Mm -hmm. of how people had treated him. Mm -hmm. And so he said, but after about two years of my goodness to him, that I had never abused him. Mm -hmm. I had never mishandled him. I had never mistreated him. I never spoke in a way that was inappropriate to him. But he said after several years, he said that dog was still cowering down every time somebody would walk up. Mm -hmm. And he said, finally, I said to the dog, how long will it take you before you realize I'm not your old master? Mm -hmm. Wow. I like that. How long will it take you before you realize I'm not your old master, I'm the good master? Um, The dog had learned to draw back under the old master and he kept drawing back. You know what? Under our old master of sin and Satan and death, we learn to draw back in fear. We learn to worry. We learn to doubt. That's right. That's good, Pastor. But we're not under our old master. Come on, right. We have no business drawing back. Right. We have Lord. we have a love master. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. A love Lord. Right. Yes. He's our Jesus is our Thank Savior, yes. our Lord, yes. and He His flow is completely good. Yes. His yes. flow is completely yes. merciful. Yes. So we should never draw back from Come Him. On. If yes. we miss it, 
we should run to him. Yes. Yes. And yes. if we will really become a daily partaker of his goodness and his mercy yes. just by praising him for it, yes. and his goodness and mercy will flow into our lives, yes. then it will keep us to where we miss it less and less yes. and less. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. And so for many, they live under a sense of sin consciousness yes. because they're mindful of their old master, mm -hmm. their old life. Mm -hmm. And we have no business accusing God who is our love Lord, yes. our love master yes. to ever accuse him by being fearful mm -hmm. toward him, by being, if I could say this, by being doubtful toward him right. because he is so constant. Yes. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yes. We know exactly what we're going to receive from him right. when we get with him. When we go to believe God, we know what good things will yes. flow from yes. him. We have no business doubting. Right. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Now think about it. Uh, with the woman that was caught in adultery and the religious leaders brought her before Jesus because they were trying to trap Jesus into a difficult situation. And um, they brought her before him and said, well, the law says she should die because of the sin she's committed, that she should be stoned. What do you say? And you know what he said? Nothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's, not, he's not quick to jump on it when people fail. Right. Um, his, his response was he just was silent toward her. Mm -hmm. And then he stooped down and wrote in the dirt. And after a period of time, I believe a couple of things. It seems to me he's listening. Mm -hmm. yes. what, would, yeah. what would God say to him right. of how to handle this situation? Yeah. Um, but as he's drawing in the dirt, those who had gathered there began walking away one at a time from the oldest to the youngest. Mm -hmm. And then he, uh, stood up and he said, he had said, uh, the one that's without sin, you, you go ahead and you throw that rock. Mm -hmm. Well, they realized, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I've, I've missed it. Yeah. So. Yeah. They drop their rocks and they walk off. What a masterful answer. Yes. He heard that, no doubt. The Spirit of God gave him the wisdom yes. of what to say at that moment. Yes. That's the goodness of God. If you'll listen, he'll all, goodness will always give you the right answer. Yes. And so uh, after he said that, everybody dropped their rocks and walked off. And then he stood up and he said to her, he said, uh, where'd your accusers go? She said, there's none left. Mm -hmm. There's none left to accuse me. And he says, neither do I accuse you. Mm -hmm. He said, uh, go and sin no more. Yeah. Yes. That's right. So he wasn't permissive toward what she did because he told her, don't do it again. Right. Yes. Those, that crowd that day was disappointed. Mm -hmm. He disappointed her accusers with goodness. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. He disappointed her accusers with mercy. Yes. He disappointed her accusers with kindness. Mm -hmm. I want you to know Satan is the accuser of the brethren. Mm -hmm. yes. And how Jesus responds is a constant disappointment to our accuser. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Our accuser wants us to get under a sense of condemnation, yes. Yes. live under a sense of shame. Yes. But if we will thank him for his goodness and kindness, oh, yes. that sense of condemnation and shame and guilt cannot live and bury us in this life. Yes, right. Yes, right. Amen. It can't live with us because Jesus' goodness and mercy always disappoints the accuser of the brethren because he will Amen. not accuse us. Um, he gives us help of how to walk free from it. And his mercy and goodness releases us from continuing in a wrong lifestyle. It doesn't give permission. Amen. Amen. Uh, walking in love does not mean being permissive towards wrongdoing. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. Love is not permissive towards wrongdoing, but it shows the way out. Yes. Yes. And Jesus showed her the way out. He said, uh, I, give you my, I give you mercy. Mm -hmm. I give you my goodness and my mm -hmm. kindness. Now don't go back and do, do the lifestyle yes. that has tripped you up. Right. Amen. Amen. I, I was, um, years ago, I had a, a certain teacher <coughs> And that teacher was very difficult. That teacher was, the way they, they, the way they taught was not always the kindest. Mm -hmm. And I did not, my parents, my parents were wonderful parents. 
Um, they were disciplinarians. They taught us what was good. They taught us what was right. So they weren't permissive towards wrongdoing in any respect. But um, I had never been subject to unkindness in words, yeah. you know. And so whenever this teacher would deal with me, and it was not, it was not always kind. I mean, I just, if I could say this, I turned inward. It did not open me up to thrive. Yes. I did not thrive under their tutorship. But after several years, I ended up changing to a different instructor. And I tell you what, this instructor, he put a great demand on me, mm -hmm. but he was so kind right. in putting the demand on me that I flourished yeah. under him. Yeah. Yeah. I opened up mm -hmm. under him yes. and I, I excelled at such an increased rate. Yeah. And, um, the word tells us in Proverbs chapter 16 mm -hmm. and verse 21, mm -hmm. it says, the sweetness of the lips increases learning. Mm -hmm. Now listen to that. Mm -hmm. The sweetness of the lips increases learning. Mm -hmm. um, God's not going to give us that instruction and then him have a different rule he operates by. Right. Right. His words are sweet to yes. us. Yes. His words are yes. so kind to us. Yes. Why? Because yes. he knows that's, that's what lifts us yes. out of a lower place yes. of functioning to a higher place of living. Yes. Right. Amen. Then look just down a, a few verses to verse 24. It says, pleasant words are as a honeycomb, yes. sweet to the soul and health to the bones. Mm. You go to God, if you've missed it, if you've sinned, if you've made wrong decisions, I guarantee you when you run back to God, you're going to find pleasant words. You're going to find a sweetness for your soul. It will be health to your body. Yes. It will be health to every arena. Yes. Why? Because God is not looking to hold, he's not waiting with a bat to hold somebody right. over somebody's head and knock right. them in the head right. when they come. You know, um, in, in ministering, you know, as, as a pastor, I pastored for 25 years and uh, I, I, I spoke plainly to the people so that they could understand. I didn't, you know, but I, it was always my purpose to deliver something in a way that lifted them, mm -hmm. not in a way that pushed them down and told them what they weren't. Right. And I've learned this, if you're going to if you're going to have a life that flourishes, you have to lift people. You can't push them down. That's good. You can't push them down. Well, God's not going to tell us to operate a certain way and then him operate a different way. So we know this. He, there will be nothing but sweetness of the lips coming out of him. Why? Because that increases our learning. You learn, in a, you learn better in a setting where you know someone loves you. Amen. 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 And he, he meets us with goodness and mercy. When we, when we were ignorant, <laughs> he increased wow. us by being sweet in his lips. The Amen. sweetness of his words yeah. increased us. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Um, God commands us to deal with people in a, in a kindness that's the same as the kindness that he deals with us mm -hmm. in. Yes. Amen. Amen. One of the strategies of the enemy is that when God is endeavoring to promote you, advance you. You know this, that with God, everything is in the direction of increase, mm -hmm. yes. advancement, mm -hmm. more. Mm -hmm. He always has more for us. Mm -hmm. So he's always endeavoring to bring us into more. At a time when God is looking to promote us, the devil will certainly come to you with one of his strategies as the accuser of the brethren. Mm -hmm. And he will accuse you with your faults, your failures, your weaknesses, and he'll try to hold you in a place to where you turn in upon yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah. You beat yourself up. Mm -hmm. You get into a place of sin consciousness to where all you're conscious of is where you've missed it. Right. Yeah. Uh, what, all you're conscious of is what you've done wrong, yeah. how you could have done better and you didn't do better. Yeah. And so the devil seeks to hold us in that because he wants us to, he wants to injure our faith. Yeah. But I tell you what, when we turn toward God and we remember he is good, yes. he is yes. merciful. Yes. Our yes. faith will flourish yes. when we realize God's not trying to hold us back. Right. Right. And to overcome those strategies of the enemy that point us to sin consciousness, we have to remind ourselves I'm righteous and I'm righteous because God is good to me. God is merciful to me. Amen. And when you need a miracle, 
When you need a healing, the devil works the same strategy. He tries to tell you reasons why you don't qualify for the miracle that you need. He'll point to all the things that you've done wrong because that sin consciousness will rob us of miracles. Mm -hmm. Sin consciousness will rob us of the healings we need. When we need a miracle, don't let sin consciousness shorten or weaken your hand of faith. You've got to be bold with your faith. You've got to be righteous conscious and we can be righteous conscious because God is good to us all the time. He's not looking for a reason to withhold. Listen, God can't withhold. He's already given it. He's already given his power. He's already made healing power ours. He's already made miracle power our inheritance. It belongs to us. One of the greatest acts of faith that anyone can take is after they have sinned is to believe that the goodness of God, we are forgiven and washed clean by the blood of Jesus. Amen. 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 Faith focuses on God and his goodness. Doubt and unbelief focuses on all the faults, the failures, and the misses. Yes. Yes. Amen. God doesn't love us because we performed good. He loves us because he is love. Amen. And that's all that, that's all that can flow out of us, uh, flow out of him. He loves us because of his own goodness and he is good and he is love. Amen. His love for us is not based on what we can earn. And therefore I love something brother Copeland says. It is so good. He said, healing is not a reward. Healing is a property that belongs to us in Christ. Well, even so, miracles aren't a reward. They belong to us because we belong in Christ. Amen. Amen. Listen, how bold would we be if we knew we'd never missed it? How bold would we be? Well, the blood of Jesus cleanses us as though we never missed it. And that's because he, God loves us and he's good. He's good to us and he's merciful to us. I've noticed this. I've gotten to be around some very precious men of God throughout my, um, what, almost 40 years of being in the ministry. And one thing I noticed about those men who were bold in faith and their fellowship with God was rich is that they focused on his goodness. God's goodness was their focus. They would talk about God is so good to me. God is so good. And many of us have, if I could say this, not enjoyed the fullness of the fellowship because of, of God that belongs to us because we've been focused on our faults instead of focused on his goodness. Amen. Amen. Oh, come on. What's Oral Roberts? Remember when Oral Roberts, what did Oral Roberts always say? I grew up watching him in the 70s. Something good is going to happen to you today. What Richard Roberts said, something good is going to happen to you. Remember? Yes. They always, they always focused on his goodness. Yes. Well, if you're going to minister healing and miracles and power to people, it's out of God's goodness. Yes. Amen. When I look at um, the Syrophoenician woman, uh, a woman without a covenant, she was not a Jew, she came up to Jesus and she said, Jesus, she said, uh, son of David, have mercy on me. And he didn't answer her. (laughs) Now it looked like he's being rude. You know, some of some people that would, could have been around that day said, look how rude that preacher is. She comes up and she's asking for mercy and he's not even answering. How rude is he? Uh He wasn't being rude. He was being good. Right. Sometimes what looks like God being Firm with us is him being good with us. Why? Because Jesus recognized something. When she said, son of David, have mercy on me. He's son of David to the Jew. Mm -hmm. That's not, that's covenant. That's covenant words. She doesn't have a covenant. Mm -hmm. He's not son of David to her. She doesn't know Jewish history. She Mm -hmm. doesn't, that's not her, that's not her lineage. Mm -hmm. So what is she doing? She's coming to him using words she's heard, Mm -hmm. borrowed words. Mm -hmm. When she approaches him using words that she thinks he wants to hear, Mm -hmm. she didn't get any response. Mm -hmm. That's true about us. Haven't you ever used words with God that you thought he would appreciate? (laughs) 
but they weren't really heartfelt. Right. What's Jesus trying to do? He knows this isn't coming from her heart. She's just heard yeah. people call me that. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. good. Oh, good. So then she realizes she's not getting a response from him. Why? They're not heart. They're not heartfelt words. Yes, her need is heartfelt, but the words aren't the right approach. Right. She goes off to the disciples and tries to get their help, and they, they're, they're bothered by her. <laughs> Comes back to Jesus, and she, it says she fell down at his feet and worshipped him, and said, "Help me." Mm-hmm. Ah, mm-hmm. now we, we get heartfelt words, <laughs> yes. and he responded yes. to her. Yes. yes, and he responded to her. She expected him to help her based on his goodness, not based on her goodness. The Syrophoenician people, they were known for their licentious living, their sinful lifestyles. Mm -hmm. She knew the kind of lifestyle that she was living. A daughter, her daughter got a devil in her house. Mm -hmm. What's going on in her house, you see? Mm -hmm. And so Jesus said, it's not meat or it's not right for me to take what belongs to my children and cast it to the dogs. She said, truth, Lord, but even the dogs get the crumbs. I love this woman. (laughs) I love that she's got a ready answer. Why? She's not talking about her goodness. She's talking about his His goodness. goodness. We don't receive anything from him because of our goodness. We receive because of His goodness. Focus on His goodness. Receive your miracle because He's good. Receive your healing because He is good. Not because you're good at performing, but because He is good. Focus on His goodness. I want to pray with you right now. Those of you who need healing, those of you who need a miracle, let's receive right now. Father, we thank you for the Lord is good and your mercy endures forever. Father, we thank you that your goodness is in our direction that your goodness and your mercy follows us all the days of our lives. And Father, we, re- we receive of your goodness. Yes. We receive of that mercy. Yes. It's not about what we've performed. It's about what you've already done for us. So we receive of your goodness and your goodness is never withheld from us. So the flow of your goodness, that miracle flow, that healing flow never withheld. We receive our healing. We receive our miracle right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The reason we can come to you is because Kenneth Copeland Ministries has sowed the, the, the airtime for this broadcast and for all the programmers that you see on the Victory Channel. So I ask you, pray about, if you're not already, pray about becoming a partner with Kenneth Copeland Ministries because it helps programs like mine and others on this channel to come into your home. And it'll be a blessing to you. You can go to kcm.org and just sign up to be a partner there with them and it will help us to keep coming into your home. And until next time, remember this, Jesus is the healer. God bless you. To watch or listen to today's message and other messages by Nancy Dufresne, visit DufresneMinistries.org. We invite you to join us for our annual prayer conference here at World Harvest Church in Marietta, California, April 4th through the 6th. We would like everyone attending to pre-register on our website, DufresneMinistries.org. Come expecting God to do great things. Nancy Dufresne's book, Daily Healing Bread from God's Table, contains daily portions of healing bread for you to feast on and meditate on in your thought life throughout the day. Order this book now at DufresneMinistries.org. We trust you've enjoyed this message. Visit us at DufresneMinistries.org to learn of our upcoming meetings, share your testimony, submit a prayer request, or visit our online store. Thank you to the friends and partners of Dufresne Ministries for making this production possible.